Well, welcome back to another video on DC Future States. Now, today we're going to see what's going on with the Green Lanterns, Guy Gardner, Jessica Cruz, and Jon Stewart. So, yeah, that's all I got to say for this intro, and if you guys are ready, let's dive into this issue. Set in the year 2035, we begin with the planets getting invaded by this vanguard fleet. A group of coordinators alert Jon Stewart of the situation. Jon Stewart comes in with two other previous lanterns. They don't have the Green Lantern rings anymore. They must save the planet they stand on and survive without the use of the Green Lantern ring. Jon Stewart and his crew attack. Salak mentions the numbers of invaders are endless. John responds, Stay focused. Salak says, If they had Green Lantern Ring, they could fight back easily. Now, Gene Nort reminds Salak that the Green Battery is no more. Gene Nort shouts, John, watch your sis. Gene Nort bites into one of the invaders, next, saving John. Now, the coordinators tell John a whole invasion fleet is approaching. Now, John asks how many civilians escaped the planets. The coordinators don't answer. They instead ask if John needs help. John slashes at an invader and says, I said, we've got this. John defeats the rest of the invaders. The Shar people are safe. They ask John Stewart for direction. John says, Here's where we are. The vanguard of the god in red is prepping planet fall. We just defeated the first wave. You see what that cost us, right? The next fleet will be the Prime Soldiers. They don't negotiate, they just kill. The Shar people tell John what the invaders are after. They're after these arcs, these towers. The Shar people mention that their leaders abandoned them. The Shar people promise to fight with John and not abandon him. John gets a call. Good news. The coordinators say that ships with the Shar people ants are being blasted off. They'll escape and survive this attack. But that's when one of the coordinators notice that more Vanguard dropships are coming. The dropships are heading toward the fleeing ships of the Shar people. A coordinator named Kens tells the fleeing ships to take evasive action. The Vanguard dropships release one ship called Planet Fall. It's maneuvering through gravity well. It's trying to destroy the Shar people. We ship to the fleeing ships and a woman named Becca. She's listening to what Ken's orders. Becca tries to use evasive action. It doesn't work. The ship plant fall destroys a few fleeing ships and makes it into the atmosphere of the plant nearby. The coordinator Ken's warns Jon Stewart that he has incoming enemies. We shift to Jon Stewart. He watches ships be blown up by plant fall. Plant fall approaches. Jon says, we need to get underground. He tries to tell the Shard people, but they've almost given up. They can't survive Plant Fall. John tells the Shard people to wake up and lead him to the underground. A Shard man named Deshek leads John the Shard people. Deshek says, The Rail Tunnel. Everyone, follow! Ken's asks John if he needs help. Again, John says he's got it under control. John continues to fight back and protect the Shard people. Dishek leads the Shard people into the tunnels for safety. The ship plant fall lands. The door is open. A bunch of warrior-like aliens come out with guns and swords. Their leader, who's in a red cloak, says, The God in Red is watching. The God in Red sees. Make your offering. The Vanguard aliens attack and wipe through Jon Stewart's defenses. The red cloak leader kills May Shar civilians. John watches as many people die. He's frozen in place. He remembers talking with Kellawag about how they lost the ring. John is searching for what happened to the Guardians of the Universe. Something went wrong with the power battery. Something went wrong with the Green Lantern corpse. But John doesn't know what happened. Now this planet fight is just another stop on this mission. Shard people run into the tunnels faster. The vanguard species are here for big towers called the Arcs. They get closer. Ken tells John to make it to the Arcs before they do. Ken says, 
It's time you hurry, John. Time to go. A woman asks Janor. What is it? Janor looks behind his enemy. He says, Pray. John and his crew get surrounded. They're in a kill box. Genor bites and slashes at the Vanguard warriors. John Stewart shoots his blast and uses his fire blade sword. John keeps fighting and shouts, Squad, rink, on me. John tells Genor to get the people to safety. Genor says, No, we all go. Genor will not leave John alone. Genor then notices something that shocks him. One of John's allies say, John, they have a point. You'll die if you stay here. An army of Vanguard warriors approach. John decides to flee with his crew, but that means the whole mission was a waste. John says, Lanterns, always. Hold the ground. Gene Noir watches everyone's back and saves them from bad situations. That's when the red cloaked leader shows up and stabs Gene Noir with an axe. John is shot. He says, No, Gene Noir, my god. John begins to get overwhelmed. That was the first story titled Last Lanterns. Now, going to our second story titled The Taking of Sector 0123, we see Jessica Cruz. She's stuck on this base without her Green Lantern ring. The Yellow Lanterns show up, still very powerful. Lysa Drac leads her group of Yellow Lanterns. She has the power of Parallax. The Yellow Lanterns begin to take derelicts from the base. Sinestro wants the Green Lantern's derelicts. Now, Jessica Cruz watches from the vents. She's in a normal civilian jumpsuit. The Yellow Lanterns look for any remaining life forms on the ship. Lysa Drax knows there's a Green Lantern on board. Jessica Cruz hides and overcomes great fear. She remembers her training. Jessica prepares to fight back. She doesn't feel fear. She doesn't feel powerless. The Yellow Lantern named Lo thinks he sees the Green Lantern in a hallway, a dark hallway. He goes to attack. He attacks the shadows, but Jessica comes from behind and shocks him with electric energy. Jessica puts Lo's yellow ring on her necklace, right by her Green Lantern ring. Jessica continues her mission. The other hideous yellow lantern walks into the armory room. Now Jessica comes out of the vents. She shocks this yellow lantern and defeats her. Two down, one to go. We shift to Lysa Drac trying to get a hold of Lo and the other yellow lantern. They don't answer their calm links. Lysa says she knows which lantern is in the base. Lysa says her name is but that's when Jessica Cruz comes flying out of the vents. She says, Jessica Cruz of Earth, now, want to get the hell off my station. Lysa unleashes her power. She says, I am Lysa Drac, the most trusted and feared Sinestro Corps lieutenants. The wards of Parallax are burned to my skin. Is that relic you hold supposed to scare me? Jessica looks at the relic, then says, no. The girl holding it is. Jessica and Lysa begin to fight. Jessica gets her axe and tries to slash at Lysa. Jessica says, I'm not afraid of you. Lysa smiles and says, you will be. Lysa attacks with her yellow lantern energy. Jessica gets overwhelmed by fear. Lysa goes to kill her, but Jessica overcomes fear and strikes Lysa in the face. Jessica says, this is my sector. Jessica takes control of the Yellow Lantern battery. Lies on the ground, bleeding, is shot. Jessica is shot. She overcame fear. Jessica Cruz joins the Sinestro Corps. Now we shift to the final story in this issue called The Book of Guy. Obviously we got Guy Gardner in the story and we open with him flying through space. He gets coordinates from Chip the Green Lantern, the Squirrel. Now, Guy arrives at plants. He flies to the surface. He uses his Green Lantern ring to halt a civil war going on. Guy shouts to both sides. I declare this dumbass war over. Do you get me? There's a war over a relic. Guy starts to take the relic. Guy tells the aliens that he was sent to take the relic. Now, Guy tries to fly off, but that's when his Green Lantern ring just gives out. He loses the relic, and Guy falls into a farmhouse nearby. He falls very fast and hits hard at the surface. You hear a crack. Guy walks out and tries to act like he meant to stop using his ring. 
but he is still depowered. He, he tells the aliens that the relic is a piece of trash. Guy wonders why there's a war over this relic. Guy is frustrated. Guy shouts at his ring to work. The two different factions of this alien species come forth. The two generals of each side stand by Guy. Guy tells them, you two are going to help me until my ring reboots. We shift to a year later. Guy's ring still doesn't work. Guy hasn't made any progress, but today he gets the two factions to make peace. No more war over a stupid relic. We go five years in the future. Guy Gardner is now prophet for this alien race. There is now a book of Guy. A set of rules that keep peace in society. It ends the schism between the aliens. Guy pulls out a foosball table. He suggests they play foosball to celebrate the end of the war. The aliens say no. They can't do anything together. The only reason there's no more war is because Guy Gardner is there. He's a prophet to the aliens. He better not be lying, Guy gets a little nervous. We go at 25 years in the future. Guy has established world peace. The two factions of society are incredibly grateful. There's no hunger, war, or problems. Guy tears up and says, Now this, this calls for a party. We fast forward and see all the aliens having a party. One of the alien leaders say, we still don't do things together, but there can be peace because of the Book of Guy. Guy Gardner smiles. He saved the plants without a Green Lantern ring. But that's when a civilian shouts, The Book of Guy is wrong. All the civilians go against this alien. They are going to kill him. He's causing problems. There starts to be division again, but Guy stops the war from erupting. He shouts at all the aliens and gets them to bow before him. That's when Lobo shows up out of nowhere. Guy is surprised. Lobo says, You open a new warrior, isn't it? Tell me. Uncool. The aliens think Lobo is a new prophet like Guy Gardner. Lobo says, Prophet? I'm your main man. That's how we conclude Future States Green Lantern number one. So that was Future States Green Lantern number one. And this issue was okay. It wasn't really that exciting for me, honestly. Like, okay, I'm not as big of a Green Lantern fan as, say, like, I'm a big fan of The Flash or Batman or even, like, Wonder Woman. But I still really appreciate Green Lantern. And I love stories like Green Lantern's Sinestro War or Blackest Night. Blackest Night is an amazing event. So... I got excited for this, because before this, we had the Grant Morrison, Hal Jordan run, right, that went for two years, that we may eventually cover on this channel, but it was separate from everything. It was focused entirely on Hal Jordan, which I'm a fan of Hal Jordan, he's a cool character, but I also want to see other Green Lanterns. That's why I liked uh, Robert Van Dee's run in the Rebirth, right? DC Rebirth, we had Robert Van Dee's Green Lantern run, Hal Jordan, the Green Lanterns. You had all of them in these different stories. You had Hal Jordan, Kyle Rayner, John Stewart. You had Guy Gardner. It was really cool. But then you also had the separate Green Lantern book with Jessica Cruz and Simon Bass. Green Lanterns were doing great, all right? The books were amazing during the Rebirth period, right? He had a solid book, but it was so separate from everything that it was kind of hard to get into. Now we have this, and I got excited because I'm like, okay, Jon Stewart's coming back. Guy Gardner's coming back. Jessica Cruz. Will it be good? Well, first off, let's talk about the first story, Last Lanterns, which all about uh, Jon Stewart. It's all about Jon Stewart, and it's written by Jeffrey Thorne and John by Tom Rainey. Now, the artwork is alright. It fits the tone and there's some cool action set pieces but also the artwork at times, I'm not a big fan of it. Like sometimes the facial expressions or actually some of the action is not as sequential than it should be. Like it should be more sequential and more easy to follow but it's not bad art but I've seen better art on a Green Lantern book before. Maybe I have high standards with Green Lantern books, like you had Hoffa Sandoval before, you had Liam Sharp, you had like these amazing artists. No offense to Tom Rainey, but his art here just feels like standard comic art. Like it's nothing really awesome and nothing really different. Yes, if it's the tone, it's not like bad, but I don't really, there's, there's never a point where I stopped and just stared at the artwork. It was more like, all right, keep flipping through the pages. Now the writing by Jeffrey Thorne, it's not that much, all right? We just see Jon Stewart, he fights off against some invaders. That's literally it. It's a very simple concept, not that much great dialogue, nothing really awesome. And what makes it worse is that we don't even see the Green Lantern rings, all right? We don't see Jon Stewart use the Green Lantern ring, and that's why I checked out this book. 
And I know some people say, but this is that whole storyline again, that, okay, the Green Lantern loses his ring and has to use his own mind, his own skills to fight off against these invaders. But this is a Green Lantern book. I want to see Green Lantern action. And we don't get that here. And I wasn't really excited. Like, the ending is just kind of like, all right, they get surrounded. I did like seeing uh, Gene Nor here. He's a great character. Salak, too. There's some really cool characters here. And Jon Stewart's great as well, but he's just not used well. Like, I felt like this story was kind of a cop-out and didn't really get me excited for what comes next. But I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. I'll check out next issue and hopefully it gets better. Now, the second story with Jessica Cruz... Still, not really that much Green Lantern action, but there's still some Yellow Lantern action, so it evened out. And actually, the right there was much better with Jessica Cruz not having her Green Lantern rink, right? But how she acted, and the whole setting, the tone that felt like Alien. Like, it actually gave me Alien vibes, where Jessica Cruz is in these different vents, she's trying to make it through... She's being hunted by these yellow lanterns. It was actually really dope. And the ending was actually very shocking. She defeats Lysa Drac, which I was like, dang. And then she takes the yellow lantern ring. Like, this is when I got excited. I was like, all right, after a disappointing Jon Stewart opening story, we have a really cool Jessica Cruz story. So that was good. Now, the final story of Guy Gardner was just decent. It, it wasn't amazing. It wasn't bad. Just decent all around. The artwork, eh, some, okay, Clayton Henry's artwork... The thing about his artwork is sometimes it looks great, sometimes it just looks so simple and not really detailed that I'm, I don't really care for it. And this is one of those cases. But the story was funny. Uh, Guy Gardner was written well, like how his dialogue was, how he talked. I like that. And the ending with Lobo shows up gives me kind of excited for what comes next in that story. But still, it's a very simple, quick ending story. Not Nothing very, like, important. I would say the only important story in this issue is Jessica Cruz. Like, you pick up this issue, and you're like, oh, I only have time to read one story at the moment. Read the Jessica Cruz one, because you'll get a lot out of that story. You see a lot of great moments, a shocking ending, where the Guy Gardner one... It's just simple, and the Jon Stewart one is very disappointing, right? But yeah, I guess that's my thoughts on it. Hopefully, they get their Green Lantern rings in the main series coming in April, I think. Because I'm, I'm checking out a Green Lantern book to see Green Lantern action, and see all this lore explored, and some cool stuff. Not to just see some sci-fi stuff with, like, Jon Stewart. Okay, it's cool he has a fire blade, but him just blasting some invaders and protecting this plant. Yeah, there's some cool action, but that's about it. There's nothing really for me to get invested into. But yeah, overall, guys, I'm going to give this issue a 7 out of 10. Uh, it's passable mainly because of that Jessica Cruz story. That story saved the issue. If it wasn't for that story, I would probably put this issue more in like the 5 or 6 range. But I'm going to put in the 7 range. You should still check it out. It's passable because of that second story of Jessica Cruz. Because that story is just really amazing. But yeah, guys, tell me your thoughts on this issue down below. What would you rate from 1 to 10? And yeah, guys, if you like the video, give a big thumbs up. New channel, make sure to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on my next Future States video. But yeah guys, thanks for watching and peace out.